Viral Science, the home of creativity. Hey friends, welcome back to another video and in this video I'll show you how to make this 3D printed RGB Raspberry Pi based computer case and this case is super special it has a OLED display on the top over here which shows the information about the temperature the IP address RAM usage disk usage all of that can be seen directly over here and this is a RGB case it looks very awesome and you can see the size of this case it's very lovely and right now the computer is running on this CPU only you can see the complete desktop you can browse over the Chrome you can do your word editing all the Microsoft uh, Office tools right now I can see uh, I can browse on the Google you can also watch YouTube videos and do a lot of stuff and this Raspberry Pi has 8 gigabit of RAM in it and it's very smooth in working right now you can see the temperature is around 36 degrees only so this is a very cool case so I'll show you step by step tutorial on how to build this how to do all the settings to display this uh, information on this OLED screen everything will be shown in detail so without wasting time let's quickly get started with this video here is the complete blog of this project which I have uploaded on my website that is www.viralsciencecreativity.com Links will be in the description so you can refer this blog with the video and follow all the steps properly so you don't miss out anything. So this is the 3D design of our CPU tower case and I will be 3D printing it with my ANET ET4 Pro 3D printer. And these are the sides of our case which we will be cutting on a 2mm clear acrylic sheet and I will be sharing all these files with you so you can also do the same. So here is the printer printing the case. I am also using supports for all the vents. So right now our model is ready and we will remove these supports by just pressing it and it will get off easily. Since I didn't had black filament so I printed it on a white filament and then I spray painted it black completely. You can choose any color you want for your case, I have chosen black color. And these are the acrylic laser cuttings of the sides. So this also came pretty well. One of the acrylic side has the hole for the fan and also has holes for the ports of the Raspberry Pi so we can access it from outside only and the other acrylic sheet has holes uh, from where uh, hot air will be passed out so it will also create a good ventilation air flow inside the case and these are the clear acrylic 2mm sheets which we are using so the next thing you will need is a OLED display the size of this display is 0.96 inch and this display properly fits inside the case because it has the slot where we can slide in this display and you also need the same size display for this case. Next thing you will need is a Raspberry Pi 4 computer model B and I am using 8 gigabit RAM model you can also choose a 4 gigabit RAM model as well both will work fine and with this Raspberry Pi you will also need a SD card I am using a 32 gigabit SD card. Next main thing is this ice cube tower cooler sent to us by the sunfounder.com and this cooler is a RGB cooler and it has everything inside it to fix this cooler on a raspberry pi. So this is the main cooler with the heatsink. So you can see it's very good and it does the job very well as well and the fan over here is a RGB LED fan and which directly connects to the 5 volt and the ground pin on the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and you will also get an extra fan if you want you can connect it as well. So the very first step is to load the OS into the SD card and we are using the Raspbian OS which is the official Raspberry Pi OS. So let's go to the computer screen. So here is the official website of the Raspberry Pi and from here you need to download the Raspberry Pi Imager which will flash the OS into SD card. And here in the download options you will find multiple versions of the Raspberry Pi OS. So you can choose any one. I am choosing this one with the recommended software and I have already downloaded it. And now we will also download the SD card formatter. So you can download it for your Windows or Mac systems. So here I have installed. So first we will select the SD card which we have connected to the computer and we erase everything. 
So now the SD card is formatted. Now we'll open the Raspberry Pi Imager and we'll choose the OS. We'll go to use custom and select it, the downloaded one. And over here we'll choose the storage and this should be the SD card. Make sure you double check it and then we'll click on the right button and press the yes button. And now this will flash the OS into the SD card. So after some minutes it will be done and you will find this kind of messages. Just ignore it. Click on the cancel button. And yeah, you're done and click on continue and eject the SD card properly and connect this SD card to your Raspberry Pi back. So after connecting the SD card, you need to connect all the connections like display, keyboard mouse and the power connector. So here is the power cable. I'm using a micro HDMI to HDMI cable so I can connect it to my display. Next we are using is this power supply. This is a 5 volt 3 amperes power supply type C cable. So I have connected this as well and now we need to connect the keyboard and mouse. So I am using wireless keyboard mouse so I can connect this dongle and use it wirelessly. So here is the keyboard and mouse which I am using. And now at the very first boot you need to do some settings. You need to select the country. After selecting country, select the language, select the time zone and click on next. Now it will ask to create a user. So enter the username, enter the password, whatever you want. Click on next. Here it will ask to if you want to change the screen size. Then here you need to connect to Wi-Fi network so it will get updated. So I'm connecting to my Wi-Fi network. After the connection, it will ask to update. So update your Raspberry Pi completely. It will take some time and your screen will boot up. So next thing is we need to connect the OLED display. Make sure you do the connections properly. Every supplier of the OLED display has a different pin configuration. So make sure you read the pin carefully and then connect the wire. SCL will connect to GPIO3, SDA will connect to GPIO2, ground to ground and VCC to 3.3 volts. So you can connect it according to the circuit diagram which I have shown. So to display information on the OLED screen, we need to run a Python script. So follow all the commands carefully, which I'll be showing you on the screen and do it carefully and slowly. So the very first step is to keep the Pi softwares updated. So we'll run this command to check and if there are any upgrades or updates pending, so it will be done. After the upgrade, we need to reboot the system. So we'll type reboot and we'll press enter and it will get rebooted. So after the reboot, the next command is to install Python. So we are installing Python 3. After installing, we'll upgrade all the tools, setup tools. Next step is we'll upgrade the Adafruit Python shell and then we'll need to install the Adafruit CircuitPython library as well. So from this command we can install the libraries. Next we'll run this python script, so enter this command and hit the enter button. It will enable the I2C serial communication and everything and if it prompts to press any yes then press Y and hit the enter button. So as you can see it will ask for a reboot, press Y and hit the enter button and it will get rebooted. 
So now we have enabled the I2C communication from the previous script and to check this you need to enter this command and this kind of table will appear where you will find this kind of 3C that will be the address of your I2C communication with the OLED display. And now we need to enter this command to install the libraries of the OLED display. And now using this command will download the original python script with which you can display the information on the OLED display. So after downloading it, we'll navigate to its directory. And from here we'll run this script. So right now we are manually running the script and after running the script you can see all the information on your OLED display. You will see the IP address. CPU usage, temperature, memory usage and disk usage. So you'll see this kind of information on your OLED screen and if you can see then you're done, almost done. And now we'll need to run this script automatically when the Pi boots up. So to do this we need to add this script in a cron tab. So in the cron tab uh, just enter this command cron tab hyphen E then press 1 if you're using for the first time and go to the bottom of this cron tab script and here you will need to enter one following command so we'll type at the rate reboot space python then we'll enter the location from where we'll need to pick up the script and run it followed by the script name and space ampersand symbol Now since the script is not available here right now, so we'll first copy those scripts. So open your directories and go to this folder, home, then go to your folder and over here you'll find OLED underscore status folder and click over here and copy these two files that is stats.py and pixeloperation.ttf copy this too or you can even cut paste or move these files I am just copying it go to home go to the viral or in your case it will be pi and paste it over here so in this case uh, your directory will be home slash pi in my case it is home slash viral so I need to change it so I'll change this pi to viral and now we need to save this in the cron tab so just press ctrl x then it will prompt to save it then press y and hit the enter button and it will save this so now next time when you reboot uh, the oled screen will automatically show up so after reboot uh, the oled display again showed the information so we don't need to run the python script again and again now it will be done by the cron jobs so now we'll assemble our beautiful mini 3d printed raspberry pi case so first we'll connect this standoff for raspberry pi and this standoff were included in the ic cooler tower kit so we have connected all the four standoffs now we need to place the raspberry pi over it So now from this heatsink I have removed this cooler, this is the RGB fan. So I have removed this fan and we will now connect this heatsink with its connectors. So this will connectors will be placed on the Raspberry Pi. Make sure you follow this numberings on this connector, they are engraved on this and connect it accordingly. They also provided two screws for this so we need to fix it with these screws. So now we'll stick this thermal pad on the bottom of the heatsink for optimal cooling. So the thermal pads are in the proper shape of this design. So we need to use the same only. So 
so now to connect this cooler on the raspberry pi we need to connect this standoff again so we'll fix this raspberry pi with the standoff and on the top of this standoff we'll connect the heatsink Just don't forget to remove the protection plastics from the thermal pads. And we'll be using these screws to permanently fix this heatsink on this Raspberry Pi. Make sure you connect all the four screws. So right now the heat sink is properly fitted on the Raspberry Pi. So now we'll fix the fan on this acrylic sides. So first I'll remove this protection stickers. And from inside I'll be connecting this RGB fan. Connect the fan in such a way that it will intake the airflow inside the case. And now we'll connect the OLED display. So it gets properly fitted over here. So to permanently fix it, I'm using hot glue. So I'm using this hot glue gun to properly stick it. And I've already done it. You can even apply some black tape on the hot glue. So it will get hidden. So now we'll pass on this uh, wires of the fan to the other side and we'll connect this side of the acrylic and we'll tighten it up with the screws. So I have connected all the four screws and now it's permanently fixed. And on the other side, you need to do this connections as we did before. So I'm using this ribbon cable jumper to connect the OLED display. Make sure you do the connections as we did before. And we'll connect these fan wires to 5V and ground respectively. So now we'll peel off the sticker from the other side of the acrylic. And we'll connect this acrylic and tighten up the screws. So finally our this mini beautiful RGB Raspberry Pi CPU case is completely ready. So now you just need to connect all the wires that is the display port, power cable and the keyboard mouse cable and you're ready to work on this machine. So here I'm connecting the micro HDMI to HDMI cable for the display. Then we are connecting the power cable that is the type C and we are connecting the USB wireless dongle for the keyboard and the mouse and we are ready with this mini CPU. So now with this amazing build you can do really cool stuffs. You can even overclock the Raspberry Pi because the cooling system over here is very nice. It keeps the constant temperature around 36-37 degrees with the normal use and with the heavy intense use it keeps around 50 degrees and that's very good and also you can do the normal work and also even do some intense work as well you can even add the retro pie which is the game emulating system so with that you can play games over here so i hope you like this build and also don't forget to hit that like button share this video with your friends and also don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more such interesting videos and i will see you in the next one Do subscribe and press bell icon to get instant notification for new video.